going to ask questions. Or you're going to ask questions, and I'm going to answer questions. But if you don't have questions, I have questions that I'm going to throw out here that are some common questions. Some of them are some questions that you've asked, and this is how I'm going to answer these questions. And so tonight, I hope everyone is having a great night. Um, I know we're in the middle of January, and people, one of the first questions I always get is, Jason, it's slow. And I'm like, yeah, tell me about it. We're up here in the north, and it's dead. (laughs) But some of you guys in the south are down there in the nice, warm weather. Tell me where you are in the nice, if you're in the nice, warm weather, or if you're in the crappy weather. Tell me where you're um, coming in tonight from, where you're watching. Um, So if you're in the nice, warm weather, even in January, it is slow. It's probably one of the one of the two worst months of the year. That is January, and you kind of got that July August spot. So we got Mr. Michael, and he is from Indiana. We got Mr. Um, Nathan. Miss Good Evening, and he is coming in from um, Cynthia, Kentucky. We got North Carolina. How you doing, John? Um, Jacksonville, Florida. Glad to be cleaning a roof tomorrow. That's pretty awesome. Good evening from Ohio. Um, your previous summer network will carry you through till spring. It can. Dallas, Texas, Charlotte, North Carolina. That's a pretty spot. Um, working on my rig tonight in Columbia, South Carolina. What are y'all doing to grow your business right now? You know what? That's a great question. What are you doing to grow your business right now? Even if you are in the north, what are you doing right now to grow your business? And you might say, Jason, how can I grow my business when it is cold outside and I can't do nothing? Well, this is the time that you need to be doing your marketing, working on your Google My Business, working on getting your post ready to go. I didn't say send, but getting ready to go. And you can do all of that now while we are sitting on our hands, looking outside saying, man, I wish that weather would break. And so these are some things that we can do now. And so some of them can be blogging and and you might not know how to blog. Well, figure it out. Um, There's tools out there that can help you blog. Um, You know, there's different things you can do right now that will help set you apart. So when it's time to go in the spring, you are ready to go. And this will help with your phone to start ringing earlier. You might say, Jason, I'm starting my pressure washing business. I haven't even started yet. How can I do anything? You can do stuff now. Now, I understand it is hard to know what to do now when you've never done anything, started your business. And so, Things that we can do, we can work on our website, we can work on, you know, putting a blog together, we can do, um, we can work on um, social media posts for the year, right? These are all things we can do during the winter time to help us grow your business right now. Now, it's not going to have a return of money in your pocket, but it will over the long term. And you'll be surprised how that works. You know, building a business is not about building it uh, just poof and there it is. It's about building it brick by brick. And that is the key. And, you know, these are some things that we have to think about. We got Joseph up in Massachusetts. Um, Central Alabama, freezing here in Florida, 44, awful, awful, awful. Austin, Texas, Georgia, got to figure out a new plan for uh, business, motor went out in truck, 42, um, and that stinks. Um, So now we got to figure out how to get a motor in there. We got Mr. Brian, Um, we got all people from all over. Did some takedowns, getting more people on board for next season, turned some Christmas lights into pressure washing. And these are some amazing customers. Our pressure wash, our Christmas light customers are awesome pressure washing customers. So I am starting to work on something here to 
kind of figure out how do I want my show to go. And so if you all have any ideas of what might be better for me to help you, and so I will give you some thoughts of me thinking so far, um, but basically I will do an intro kind of like I've always done, kind of go into talking, you know, you know, talking to you guys, see who's all in the chat. And then my thought is um, I might actually do this before or after kind of the tool of the week. What is a, a thing that can help you grow your business? Um, you know, it could be lots of different things. It might be an actual pressure washing tool. It might be Jill's office. You know, if you never use Jill's office, talk about that for a few minutes. Um, and that will be a section of tools. And then my next section is kind of the book of the week. I want you all to start reading more and more. Um, I think it's important and you all will learn and grow. Whether it's a book of the week, maybe a podcast of the week, I can switch it up a little bit. But these are some things I'm thinking about. And so if you have ideas, let me know what I could do. Whether you want to um, text me at this number here and let me know. And that way I can, you know, I can get that information from you. Um, so if you want to text me that information, what you think might could help me or anything along those lines. If you would like to be on the podcast, you can text me. You don't have to text King. Just text me straight out to that number and I will see it. And that's something else. If you would like to be on the podcast, I would love for you to be on here. You do not have to be making millions to do it. In fact, I'd rather have people that are just starting out or have made 20, 30, 50,000. So then that way we can talk about how we can help you grow your pressure washing business. So in 2023, the thing that I'm really wanting to help is, is help you all grow your pressure washing business. Now, obviously, if you're in my mentorship, I'm going to give you a little bit more. My goal is the, is growth for 2023 is the how I can help you all grow and be successful. Um, and, you know, I've got people that I talk to and I help and this is some things. But for tonight, if you have pressure washing questions, ask down in the comments here and I will get to them. Otherwise, I've got some here and we will get here, get started here. So the one tool that I'm going to hit on this week um, I don't have a thing up for it or nothing. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to go a different route here. Um, and so I'm going to go and hit on, I have a whole list of tools that I recommend for pressure washing business. And I don't know if you knew this or not, but if you go to kingofpressurewash.com and you go slash resources or click the resource button up there, and there I have all of my resources that I recommend for you to use for your pressure washing business. There's Jill's office. If you can't answer your phone, call Jill's office. If you if you want higher average tickets, go through response a bit. If you want follow-ups, go through response a bit. If you want to have a CRM that does for your um, taxes and that, QuickBooks, right? Or there's Marquette, or there's Jobber, or there's a couple CRMs in there that I would recommend. Um, and so I have put all of that stuff on that resource page to help you so that way you can see what you have, right? And so there's all kinds of stuff that I've put on there, um, a lot of amazing things that can help you and keep you growing your business. Um, Curtis is posting in next door, which is one way to get business for sure. Marketing, marketing, marketing. Here's a ratio, 10% washing, 90% everything else. And you know what? <laughs> Actually, Nathan and I had a pretty long conversation today, um, back and forth on, on message. And so, um, he was talking about, you know, how much it costs to run his business per day. And he, it was eye opening, right? And so when you focus 90% on pressure washing and 10% on everything else, you're bound to fail. And so that's a really good, I love that, right? We only need to spend 10% on washing the how-to and 90% on how to grow this thing. How do we, how do we cut stuff? How do we make our bottom line? You know, a lot of times we want to make that big, that top line, a hundred, 200, half a million, a million but your bottom line that you put in your pocket is nothing. And so I don't care if you make 
$75,000 and you put $50,000 in your pocket versus you do 100000 and you only put 25000 in your pocket, right? Because it costs you to do business. And so we got to figure out how do we get our bottom line bigger, right? Because the bottom line is what is the most important part of growing a pressure washing business. We can't grow and we can't scale if our bottom line is zero, because at that point you have a job and you will be burnt out and you will not make money and it's not no fun. And so these are some important things, you know, Nathan was telling me, you know, he was sh showing me his numbers, right? And it was a big number what it was costing him per day to pressure wash. And so the thing that I would tell you is, is what is your number per day? How much does it cost you to show up at work? Now, one thing was, is the Christmas lights and pressure wash, from which that's going to bring up the price a little bit and kind of skew them off a little bit. But what is the cost for you to run your business per day? And I guarantee you, you wouldn't believe how much it is when you take it. And how do you figure that number out? Well, what you do is you figure you work nine months out of the year, right? And you divide that by 20 days a month and that'll give to you and how much money it took, how much money you spent and put that per day. And that will get you pretty close of how much it costs you to run your business per day and a lot of times you don't realize that you know some it was over five hundred dollars per day and so that is something that you got to think about when we're dealing with this stuff we got michigan up very up north it's cold hey jason i just got some yard signs in i know it's only january but when should i start putting them out i live in michigan i would wait till probably march april um, when you start mowing grass, you know, and, and that's the thing, right? We, the seasons are weird. You know, there's times that you might not start till May, um, because that, but you know, I would probably look around March, April ish is when I would start putting out yard signs, order signs, door hangers, and business cards, um, contacting HOAs. This is a great thing to do right now too. Um, contacting HOAs, apartment complexes, commercial growth getting SOP in line, preparing for March, right? These are things we can do now. We can go door knocking. We can go flipping rocks at apartment complexes and, and apartments and um, HOAs and in commercial work. These are things that we can do while we're sitting on our thumbs, don't know what to do. And so it is important that this is something that we can do during the winter time. A lot of times your home shows are during the winter time. If you can muster up the $2,000, $2,500 it costs to do the home show and get everything ready for a home show, then do a home show. Um, that can be a way to get business and drumming up stuff. Um, dotting my I's and crossing my T's. Um, chat GPT blog and writings. Just make sure you switch them out a little bit. Otherwise, they will get maybe hanged. Um, how do I set up my successful Google AdWords campaign? How do I convert clicks to leads? So um, that's a great question. Um, what I'm going to tell you is, is it can be tough to set it up if you don't understand Google Ads. Um, I know that you can do smart ads, and that's fine, but I don't recommend smart ads. Google's going to spend your money. Um, but some things that we need to make sure if we set up a pressure washing ad, it talks about pressure washing. It takes us to a pressure washing landing page. And on that landing page, we have large call to actions. Um, we have, you know, we, you can't go to other pages. It's all about that, right? It's all about how do we get that person to click and make sure that we set that up. This is something that we have to think about when we're dealing with Google Ads. Um, and sometimes the clicks aren't as good as we want, but we gotta remember, you know, it is money in the bank eventually. Feeling the five-year burnout. Well, if you're still on the truck, you can definitely get the burnout. Um, this is where I would tell you to start scaling and hope, you know, and start working working on the business instead of in the business um i know i had sam on here a couple months ago on the pressure or christmas light side and he's been in business for 10 years and it just now was their first year they did a million um they broke the million mark 
And, you know, he started working in on his business instead of in his business. And so he got a coach. He got different things to help him grow and scale his business. Um, that's one reason why I like doing Christmas lights a lot of times because you kind of go pressure washing, you get burned out, and then Christmas lights, and then you get burned out and you go back to pressure washing. Um, and so that's some things to think about. Um, handed a business card to Sharp looking guy at the counter at Waffle House. And he said he gets his house cleaned every year, but this guy is getting a little flaky. Said he'd give me a call, right? Flipping rocks, sending out messages. Absolutely. We love flipping rocks. Um, and redesigning a website with a different company. I just started last year and I'm on the top three of Google. Didn't even pay for it too. Yeah, you can. Um, if you do Google local or Google my business and you do all the things that you need to do, like putting your pictures, getting your reviews, um, um, getting your citations, doing all of those things will help you get to the top three and you don't have to pay nobody to do it. Um, doing your Google My Business post, right? Those are the things that will drive our Google My Business and get into the top three for Google. Um, and But the um, proximity, make sure you're in a good area. You know, sometimes you might think that you're doing well um, because you're checking at your house. And if you're at your house, you are going to do well but you need to check it at different places. Um, New Zealand washing them tin roof down here. Philadelphia. For the book readers out there, ChatGPT can give you a detailed summary of the book and the action steps is such an amazing tool. <laughs> More whiteboard time. Well, I would do a whiteboard time. Okay, I like it. More whiteboard time. That's what you're saying about doing that. More whiteboard time. Um, actually, I've tried something the other day in my mentorship, and I might even do more of that. Um, and it's a way that I can bring in a whiteboard without me writing because I can't write worth the month. Save my life. Yes, 44 here in Florida, but that's Wednesday. It will be 80. Um, getting work, social media has no weather problems. Gave you a great review on your Audible podcast. I appreciate that. I thank you a whole lot for that. I'm sure Chat GPT probably helped you write it, but I appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. Um, if anybody else wants to give me a, a review on my Apple podcast, I don't even know how to get to it, but I would appreciate it very much. Um, tips or tricks of the week. I like that. Tips or tricks of the week. Tips or tricks of the week. I'm writing these things down so I don't forget them. Because sometimes I do. Um, set emails to property managers in my area today. Awesome. Watching from TV is awesome. <laughs> hey, Jason. What's the login URL for your CRM? It is um, app, A-P-P dot king of marketing dot I-O dot I-O. Miss Pink Robin from Florida. Um, almost posted your video and parts list build of a soft wash on Cody's how to build soft wash system for 149, but didn't want to start nothing. That's funny. I thought about that too. Um, can you offer solar panel cleaning as an add-on for pressure washing? Because I see lots of dirty. Yes, you can. Um, you do need a water-fed pole would be best for you. Um, but you can do it with a water-fed pole. I don't know if you could do it. I don't know if I'd be doing I would definitely not be spraying bleach on them. Um, but a water-fed pole will definitely help clean that. And that's a good add-on, right? So we don't have a whole lot of them yet in this area, but they are starting to pop up, you know. And so that would be an add-on. Um, and that way we can do our packages, right? And I didn't even think about that, but this is a way that we can do packages because we are going to start seeing more and more solar panels. Um, so that's a good way to add for packages. So that way we can get our average ticket up, right? The goal for this year is how high can we get our average ticket? Um, and I want to see you all get your average ticket up. Um, these are things that we need to work on. 
and this is, I know, scary for a lot of times. Um, we see other people in our area, and they're charging way less, and we're worried to death about them. But don't worry about them, right? I told you that Nathan's cost per day was over $500 per day. So you can't worry about the $99 guy because the $99 guy is going to go out of business if his cost is $500 a day. And so you think that you think that $500 is, you know, a lot or not a lot, but if you're a $99 guy, that's five jobs to just to break even and not even making money. And so this is why we got to get our average ticket up because if we can't get our average ticket up, then we're going to have issues. Um, and we're going to have big issues at that. So we got to make sure that we get our average ticket up. Um, the higher we can get that average ticket up, the better off we are. Spitting facts. Um, that cost did not include labor. Yeah, that wasn't even including labor. That wasn't even including a helper. Um, that was just him. Um, I'm about $700 a day for labor and cost. And so that's the thing, right? We got to make a $700 before we even start making money. And so this is why it's important that we raise our prices. We get our average tickets up and make money. How do we do that? Packages, right? We got to offer packages. If so, if Miss Jones is calling for a $400, $300 house wash, the other thing is raise your prices on your house wash. You know, if you're at two, three, if you're at $300 for a 3,000 square foot house, we got to raise our prices. We got to get them up. Um, if we don't, we're going to lose money. Um, are we going to lose jobs? Yeah, we're going to lose jobs, but we're going to make more money by getting our average ticket or our pricing up so that way we can keep growing our business. Um, in Michigan, we usually start late April, early May. Yep, unfortunately, depending on how far you're up. Um, what's all involved in getting ready for a home show? Um, well, some of the things you need is like a backdrop. So you need it. Usually you got to have a backdrop or of some type. Um, you're going to need some marketing material, whatever you're going to do, whatever you're going to give away, whatever you got to try to get emails, right? We got to get emails. Um, and so whatever works to get emails. Maybe, you know, and we need the people that own the home. So we, you know, we can do sometimes if you do like a gift card or an iPad, well, that's the, that gets everybody. And we don't really want everybody. We only want people that own houses. Um, I have given a house wash away for free and that gave, got me some. Um, I've also not given anything away. I, the one thing I did like doing is the hundred dollar bills and then you put your information on the back and you throw them on the floor and people pick them babies up faster than anything because they think they're stepping on a hundred dollar bill um, and then you can go put them everywhere but that's a good marketing term anywhere go put hundred dollar bills in Kroger's and different places and people will pick up that card thinking they got a hundred dollars and here they got your business card now can you give some script examples of what you're giving a cold call to an HOA in person script versus a phone text. So a text, you're probably not doing much of a text on that. Um, on an email, we're keeping it simple. We're not going five page long. We do 25 services and we can help you out, right? It's kind of per service. So in the springtime, hey, it's spring cleaning. You need any building cleaning. And that's pretty much it. We keep it simple. We do not get too long. Property managers are very busy. They don't have time to go reading all of this stuff that you have. Um, it's just not going to happen. Um, you know, in the fall, hey, gutter clean out. Do you need any gutter clean out? We can come clean your gutters. Um, you know, and so we also know in August that it's budget season. Hey, it's budget season. What do you, what are you going to need any pressure washing or roof cleaning next year, right? Because HOAs and property managers is about the long game. It is not about we're going to get work today. Um, it's a game that we got to build relationships with people. So if we're going to go in person, it's more about building that relationship. If I'm going to go in person, I'm going to have a nice folder with nice copies of different of our services in there to hand to them. And we're going to start building that relationship. Right. And if they don't, we're not going to be pushing to try to get pressure washing today, but we're going to be pushing for next year. Right. 
because a lot of times their season is usually August, September is usually their budget season. And so we also know that they usually clean stuff in that time of season too, like July and August, because it's the end of their budget. They still have money left over, so now they can clean it. Um, but a lot of times they're putting that budget stuff into next year. So it is important when we're dealing with commercial, it is not about we're going to get this quick buck. Will we get a couple quick wins? Sure we will. If we flip enough rocks, sure. But a lot of times we're building that relationship for the next year and the next year and the next year. Um, what's good, brother? Ain't seen you live in a while. Well, if you want to see when I go live, you can check out. You can sign up. King, text King to the 859 six nine six one one zero one and i go live every sunday night at eight nine o'clock and i'm moving it it's going to be on wednesday night wednesday night at um, nine o'clock wednesday instead of thursday um, have you ever thought about doing asphalt ceiling and paint striping striping no i did not um how do I find the Jasper tool? So there's two ways. Jasper tool is jasper.io. Or if you go to pressurewatchhelp.com slash Jasper, um, you can go that route. Or you can go check out chat GPT. Type it in. It's free version right now. It's for free. Now, it will be paid before long, but it is free. A funny failure in your business idea. I like that. A funny failure in your business moment your business um hey jason joe from austin are you still providing the basic websites if i have the monthly membership yes my gmb is still suspended but just part starting and going to plaster hundred yard signs next month. I do. Yes, I do. Um, and you go to king of marketing.io. I know it says Christmas lights. I haven't changed it yet. It is for pressure washing also. And I will, and it says 147, but that will get not charged as long as you're a member of King of Pressure Wash. Um, I use Jobber and I'm happy with it, but I hear a lot of good things about Responsive Bid and customers being able to almost book um, almost book themselves. Just a lot of setup, which is fine, which should I switch? <coughs> so there is a lot of um, setup, but you can pay a thousand bucks and they will set it up for you. And I'm gonna tell you, it is worth this thousand dollars. You will spend 40 to 80 hours to set that thing up if you try to do it on your own. Um, and it will raise your average tickets up. You will get your average tickets up by using Responsive Bid. The other thing nice about Responsive Bid too with Jobber, because Jobber sucks at follow up. Um, so that is where the nice thing about Responsive Bid is good at. Because I will say it again Jobber sucks at follow up. Um, Jobber is great at a lot of other things, but they suck at um, the follow up. So that's where responsibility comes into into space. So you can go to kingofpressurewash.com. Oh, I do have resources there. Huh. Yeah. So when I was talking about it in the beginning, kingofpressurewash.com slash resources, and you'll find that on there. So if you all have questions, tonight's Q&A, so make sure you ask your questions. What's the difference way to find What's the best way to be found in different location? I live and set up Google my Google page in Philadelphia, but most of my work is in the suburbs. So what you want to do is is you want to have landing pages on your business of those areas. And then what you're going to do is is you're going to post photos from your business there. And then when you ask for reviews, you want them to say that area for you. 
and then you're going to post photos of that area and not just so pressure washing photos but maybe photos of like your truck in front of that city limit sign stuff like that right um because we're going to give google clue google can read what's on that picture you can write whatever you want on that picture but google knows what's on that picture google knows the the location of that picture and so them are some things that we want to push is um you know our truck our people in front of the city building the firehouse different things like that can help with um showing google where we are cleaning at and things like that um another thing you can do is have uh, obviously on your website have pages and talking about a lot of that stuff too on about that area and and then we're going to do google post about and link it to there also so we're kind of doing lots of things to point them to those suburbs love the videos man hope all is well 2023 is going to be a great year it is and you know i i one thing i wanted to hit on because i forgot about it here actually um i wanted to hit on it before i got started um is you know there's two types of mindsets and if we have one mindset over another mindset, it's going to hurt us in business. So we need to have a lot of people have a scarcity mindset, right? They, they think that the world's going to end and they think that, you know, the world's against me and I'm going to fail. And, and, and they have this mindset and it's not a good mindset either. It's bad. So I don't want you to have a scarcity mindset in 2023. I want you to have, an, and, and another thing a, 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 spare, a scarcity mindset is, is what about my competitors? My competitor is, is cheaper than me and there's not enough work. And, and I see it in a lot of Facebook groups, right? This is the, the language. There's too many pressure washers. You know, there's too many gurus are oversaturating the market. And that's a scarcity mindset. And a scarcity mindset does nobody any good. You need to think in an abundance mindset. What's an abundant mindset? You know what? There's more work out there and there's plenty of work out there and we're going to do amazing this year in abundant mindset, right? We're not going to sit there and put ourselves in this box and say, oh my God, if it's not outside this box, I can't do it, right? But we want to take that box, that scarcity mindset box and throw it out the door and giving us an abundance mindset, right? There's plenty out there. You can do a million dollars in most of 99, probably 95% of every one of our these areas that everyone's in here. Now, I understand there's some that live out in the middle of Timbuktu, and you're going to have to drive a couple hours to get to any major city, and you're not going to do a million dollars in that area, right? But if you live in Philadelphia, there's a million dollar business and they're guaranteed. There's probably three or four of them in that area, maybe five or six, who knows? But this is something to think about having an abundance mindset. A lot of people struggle with this. This is something that's not normal. This isn't taught at school to have an abundance, right? School is taught about how you spit in this box and you don't get out of that box. And if you're out of that box, you're weird and you're, got ADD and whatever else. Well, if you're an entrepreneur, you probably got ADD anyway, and you got squirrel syndrome. And so with that, make sure in 2023 and on that you have an abundance mindset. And I was actually learning from this, um, um, Ryan Stuman, if you haven't checked him out, go find him on Facebook or YouTube. He does a lot of stuff. He posts a lot of things. Um, he's the hardcore closer also, but he talks a lot about having an abundance mindset and it's a big difference, right? How you wake up in the morning makes the way your day goes all day long. If you wake up in the morning and be like, man, it's Monday and it just sucks. Well, guess what? Your life's going to suck. Um, but if you're like, man, it's Monday and it's an awesome day and I can't wait to go do this and this and this, right? It, have an abundance mindset, people. Let's, let's have an abundance mindset in 2023. Anybody here currently using drones and doing video editing? What software do you recommend? Um, well, the drones will come. The, it just downloads it onto a um, SD card. And then I would use, um, you can use iMovie. You can use anything at that after that point. 
Russell Brunson and Dan Kennedy have been helping me get marketing ideas together. This is another podcast I highly recommend. It's the marketing. I don't remember the podcast marketing. Um, I'm going to go look it up. So, cause it is a great podcast. Um, it is the marketing. There it is. Magnetic marketing. If you have, if you're not, um, it's a great one. I would highly recommend you. Dan Kennedy is the OG of is the OG of marketing. Um, he is way back when he's an old dude, but he knows marketing. He knows marketing inside and out. Um, and so he literally don't have a computer at his house. He has a typewriter that he types everything up, um, and it's pretty crazy. But Dan Kennedy is a great podcast to listen to. Just planning on starting a new business. I just bought a four gallon pressure washer and basically every tool I need. How much Kim should I buy straight out? Like the 2,500 square foot, how much SH will I buy? You'll use about five gallons is all you're gonna use. Now we spent about, looks like you spent probably two or three grand on pressure washing. Now how much are we spending in marketing? Because marketing is what grows our business. I know the equipment's a lot of fun, but marketing, marketing, marketing. We got to do marketing. Um, proud new grandpa. Yep, I seen that. She was born on 111, um, 23. So 1123. That's funny. 123. Um, at 1020, weighed seven pounds. Man, so excited for this journey of life with the new baby. Awesome. That is awesome. 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 Um, how do I find HOA contacts in my area? Um, Google is one way. Um, LinkedIn is another way. LinkedIn is probably going to be your best. And then you can also um, look up HOA um, boards and stuff like that, different things. Um, best chemical, best chemicals that you use during your business. All oh, best chemicals that you use during your business. Well, that's bleach would be every week because that's the money maker. I'm not a big chemical guy, Gino. Um, I was, you know, basic, basically only chemicals I used was, um, bleach and I did use sodium hydroxide a little bit, not too much, actually hardly any at all. And then I used acid, um, usually F9 and then sometimes I use aluminum brainer, but that was pretty much of my chemicals. Um, did you find January or after key holiday season to be quiet? Yes. January is always a slow month. Always, always, always. Hey, King of Pressure Washing, do you recommend a billboard for brand recognition? So I've seen some people do billboards. I've known probably very few that have been successful. The one that I do know that was successful um, actually didn't come from the billboard. It came from the business card that got handed to him. And he got a billboard and that dude was a networking dude and he got a lot of business for him. He did probably over a half a million dollars just from that dude that owns the billboard company. Um, make a video of the best chemicals you ever use. Uh, what tool to use for redoing a website? Marketing, king of marketing.io. <laughs> Um, just got laid off from my full-time job. Time to get that money. Let's go 2023. How many leads should a sole trader aim to obtain within a month? Um, it depends, you know, how much you want to do um, and what's your closing rate. You know, if you want to do two jobs a day and your closing rate's 50%, that means you got to get four leads a day. Time, so four times 20, you're looking at 80 leads a month to do two jobs a day. Um, so it's all in the, the numbers that you're looking at. Um, so, and how long it, how much is your clip, what's your close rate, right? So those are some things that you got to think about, right? Business, all businesses is math work backwards, right? Figure out what you want to do and work the math backwards. When I started, used your member photos, but I have 300 photos now. Should I take yours down for ranking reasons since you're not in my area? You can, and I don't think it's going to hurt you. Just, I would make sure that, and you probably are, but I want to make sure that I'm going to hit on this because I actually hit on this on Monday Night Marketing um, last Monday. You know, 
and even website. You know, I see so many websites and so many um, Google My Business stuff of before and after pictures. And yeah, before and after pictures have their place, but not all of that place, right? I want to see pictures of you, you in your uniform, you with a uniform hat, looking uniformy, right? Your truck in front of the house, um, right? Those are things that I want to see. Those are things that are going to help you grow your business. Not a before and after of a trailer that looks so nasty they haven't cleaned anything. Because the customers we want, their houses are clean, right? They're not filthy dirty. Their houses are clean. And them are the houses we want. We don't want the nasty, dirty houses. We want the clean houses that you're like, this house is clean. I'm, and you're going to clean it again. And you're like, yep, sure will, because you want me to, right? Those are the houses we want. But we don't get those from the nasty before and afters. We want pictures of you. People do business with people. People don't do business with bu- businesses. They do people with business or people. So it's important that you have your photos of you on your Google My Business. It's important you have your Google My, on your Google My Business, on your website, on your social media, right? It's about you and your employees. Make sure you have those pictures on there. Then Facebook groups are something else, like watching the news. Seems like only bad stuff. And I've said that, right? I've said that. Stay out of the Facebook groups. Only Facebook groups you need to be in is is um, is neighborhood groups. I like one thing about working a pressure wash group. Um, I don't allow a lot of that crap to go on because I don't like it. If you can't, if you don't have nothing positive to say, don't say it at all. Is the way I look at it. There are a lot of pressure washers, but there's a lot of rigs on Facebook Marketplace because they went. Somebody went, one guy in my mentorship went and bought a rig out of um, Tennessee, had spent like fifteen, ten to $15,000 on this rig and sold it because he only did like two jobs. Rigs do not make you money. You can have the nicest pressure washing $20,000 rig out there and it is not going to make you money because it does not make this thing ring. If you want this thing to ring, you've got to... Make sure you are um, spending money there. Um, I have such terrible luck with Facebook groups. My town has personal and business groups I utilize weekly, and it's been great. Yep. What do you use for scheduling estimates, quotes, etc.? Um, a CRM. Um, you can uh, estimates and stuff. I would highly recommend Responsibid. Responsibid works really well um, to be able to get your estimates and get quotes out. And you can even schedule with it. Um, or you can use a CRM like Jobber or Marquet or um, anything. Been watching you for a while and you and a few others have inspired me to take the chance. Starting out. I was going to spend about $500 a month on marketing for 100 signs, 1,000 door hangers, and 500 cards. I would spend a lot of that on yard signs. Yard signs are going to do way better than 1,000 door hangers and 500 cards. 500 cards are pretty cheap, though. You're only like 25 bucks for that. So, Um, but awesome. When a pressure washer sells a job, I'll get the biggest one that I can afford. What are the main things to focus on building your first website? Pictures of you and um, pictures of you. (laughs) And not, but here's the thing. Focus on the customer, right? It's not about you. Focus on the customer. You know, you can do this, and this is a little thing you can do that I would highly recommend you to do, is go, and I've done it for a couple businesses, and it works. Go download all of your Google reviews and go put it in the chat GPT and ask it, um, give me, build me a, a customer avatar for, for a pressure washing business. And a lot of times it ain't got nothing about pressure washing. 
It's more about communication. It's more about um, time. And so that's what we're selling, right? We're not selling pressure washing. We got to make it easy. If your website is hard to read and got a bunch of words and people are going to bounce and go because you've got to make it simple. You know, simple is better when we're dealing with it. And not only when we're building a website, don't look at it on your on your on computer, but look at it on the phone. How easy is it to read on a phone? How easy is it to navigate on the phone? Because the phone is the most important part of why we're doing this. You'll figure find out that 70 to 80 percent people will find you on their phone versus on the computer. Speaking of the fact that the competitor is cheaper than me, how can I respond to that situation? Don't worry about the speaking of the fact that the competitor is cheaper. Than, don't worry about it because if you're going off a of price, then that's you're going to lose every time. What are you selling? What are you what are you what value are you adding to them that your competitor is not? Because we're not worried about, we're not selling on price. If you're selling on price, you're going to lose a job every time. Or you're going to be a $89 guy if you're selling on price. Do you answer the phone? Do you um, tell them what you're going to do? Do you explain what how you can help them? Do you shut up and let them talk? You know, I talked to, um, somebody messaged me the other day um, and was telling me that, man, Jason, I started shutting up and just letting them talk. And I'm like at 100% close rate. Well, yeah, because they'll tell you what they want. You know, a lot of times we get on the phone and we're like, blah, 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 bye, right? Instead of, okay, yeah, you want to, you want more time back? Okay. You want to be time with your family? Okay. Awesome. You want it done next week? Sweet. Hey, do you know we got a opening next Wednesday that this year, right? We can sell on those things that we know because we listen. I can ask, can I can, I ask a new potential customer to send me a few pictures of the job. Ask a new potential. So what you can do is, is you can send those pictures to your customer, right? Because we're going to do things like no other people are going to do. And that's going to set us apart. Hey, Miss Jones, here is your house completed. Um, and just letting you know. And a lot of times those they will pick, take that picture and post it. And when they post it, it is better than when you post it. Not my potential customer and will be your customer. Simply let them know what you offer. <clears throat> People do business with people they like, like, know, and trust. We must be likable. But if they know, if they like, know, and trust you, they'll buy from you. Um, chat moved on me, and I thought it was you. Laughing, my bad. <laughs> um, you think it would be best to buy an existing rig from those guys or build a new one? I mean, if the deal's good enough, I'd buy it. A lot of times you can... You can buy it way cheaper than you can build it or get it brand new. And a lot of times they ain't that old or they ain't got nothing wrong with it. What type of posts are the most effective on Facebook and LinkedIn? I'm thinking a video is better than just pics. You're right. Video is better. Um, but it is not about, look at this pressure washing job, right? It's not about that type of posting, right? Um, it's about building relationships, um, asking questions. Um, you know, things like that, giving information, giving knowledge, right? Tell them what, what is this on the picture, right? This is mold. It is blah, 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 right? We give it information. Um, got a call last week for a roof wash. And while we were there, we educated the client on all aspects of their home. The quote ended up being $8,200. We have not won it yet, but the thought is to quote everything. Absolutely. Even if we close half of the quote, we still made great money. Just quote it all no matter what. Soft wash with a proportioner or downstream? Well, if you're just starting out, I would say downstream. Because you can downstream with a pressure washer and a surface cleaner and clean everything except roof cleaning. But if you have a soft wash with a proportioner, you cannot pressure wash decks. You cannot pressure wash concrete. So that's why I recommend that. 
What's better, a email blast or a text blast for advertisement? Well, they're cutting, they're hammering down on text blast right now. So I like text blast, but I don't know how much of that's going to be happening. I want to see everyone start quoting with packages every time you quote. Jason, what do you think about that? Will that help us? Absolutely, a hundred percent. You have, you know, if you're going in person, you got to quote everything. I mean, you're quoting everything. You're quoting the concrete cleaning. You're cl- quoting the concrete ceiling. You're quoting gutters, cleanouts. You're cu- you're quoting everything because the goal of it is is to get that every to get it that high up, and then that way, if they buy in the middle, they're at a thousand dollars, right? And so that's why we want to quote everything. And so if you want to come to a class. I have a couple classes in person training. So these are not you watch me pressure wash. This is a day. So the one in Florida is only going to be a day. So it's going to be a long day. Um, And so it'll be classroom and we'll talk about marketing and how to grow a business, chemicals and safety. And then we go out and we'll do a house and we will clean a house and we will make it look good. Um, And that is in in February. And in, in March, you can come see me and Chris. And Chris is a man that did 550, 600,000 this past year. He's got a lot of great sales and uh, marketing tactics. I would recommend you to come listen. Um, And this will be a two-day class, March 3rd and 4th, I believe it is, whatever that Friday, Saturday is. Um, And it is Myrtle Beach. So you can come to Myrtle Beach. Um, It's only about 20 minutes from the airport. So if you want to fly in, we'll be about 20 minutes from the airport or somewhere in between there. Um, and so you can definitely want to go check that out. You can go to kingofpressurewash.com and then you'll find it there. Um, let's see. You can go, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can go to kpwtrain.com, kingofpressurewashtrain.com. I actually bought that domain. I think it works. I don't know if it works or not. I hope it does. Um, let's go try it because you know what? I've done other stupid things that didn't work and we're going to try it here trained.com simple right if it works might work might not yes it works it will take you to the page of the training date so go check out kpwtrain.com that way it's easy to, to put in there listen to the customer they will tell you what they want shut up and listen this is so true man you know how many people have a struggle with this there's a lot of people that struggle with this right here. They want to tell them about that we soft wash and we do this and we do that and shut up and listen, right? You'll be surprised how you will learn by what they want done and how they want it done. You know, if you find that missy picky, miss picky, whatever, she's going to tell you she is. But if you didn't shut up and listen and you go do the job and you only do three quarter good job. You only got it to about 80% and you found out she was in the 95th percentile. Then you're going to get a bunch of callbacks and you're going to get a lot of crap at the end of the day. Um, So it is definitely something you got to do. We'll be built building a new is a problem because you can't get key components. Um, Some of that is. How much is the one in Florida? So the one in Florida will be a little bit cheaper because it's only one day. So it's only $700, um, I believe, is that one. The one in Myrtle Beach, you get two days and you get Jeremy or you get Chris also, and it is $1,000. Um, you push Facebook Lives, so I'm going to do them because Jason says so. <laughs> what I will see ha- happen out of it. Well, first off, you're going to suck. Um, if you haven't done much fa- video, you're going to suck. I'm going to tell you right up front. It's not going to be like the best thing ever. Um, but if you are consistent with it and you're prolific with it, you will get better and you will get an audience that will start showing up and watching you. But when you first start, you will suck. You're nervous. You're scared to death. And you just got to do it. Think of just do it is what i'm going to tell you and you can do different things right hey look we're here at this house we're going to do a house wash did you know that your house has mold on it and it's probably on the north facing side right and we can just talk about that kind of stuff 
And, you know, once you start doing it, and don't just do them right there. Hey, look, we're eating today at lunch at this restaurant. What's your favorite restaurant? Tell me in the comment what your favorite restaurant is, right? And, and the goal is, is to get engagement. That's the goal. How do we get engagement? And how do we do that is usually asking questions. And in, in you don't just do Facebook Lives, right? We can do other things too, like posting. Posting questions. Who is the, where is the best restaurant in Cincinnati? Who is the best painter in Cincinnati? Who, who, you know, what's your favorite park in Cincinnati? What's your favorite dog? Show me a pic. You know, here's another one that's really good. Take pictures of dog, your dog. If you have a dog, put that on that website, right? People love dogs. People love their dogs. Now, there's some people that hate dogs, but most people love their animals, right? And so... Put a picture of your cat if you got them. Different thing. You can post all different kinds of things. Put a picture of your cat and say, post a comment of your cat down in the comment, right? And then you can say, oh, that's such a pretty cat. That's such a cool dog, right? We can do that kind of thing to build that thing. And then when you do go live, it will take off because now we're building engagement and that's what Facebook wants. I'm going to put my yard signs out every Thursday night week. Consistent advertisement. Con being consistent, relentless, and prolific will grow your business. I'm thinking on, I'm thinking no Facebook Live, but constant videos, then edit them down to TikTok length. And here's the thing about it. So, face, not don't just do Facebook and then tank, do down to TikTok toxic, but also do it on Facebook Reels. Because Facebook Reels is actually doing really well. Because who is our target market? Old people. Who's on Facebook? Old people. And they are watching a lot of Facebook Reels. So I would definitely consider doing it for Facebook Reels and TikTok. Um, and YouTube Shorts and, and uh, LinkedIn. Put them on all of them. I have stepped up my game on this here. I'm doing one video a day. Now, I know some of my TikToks haven't came out from YouTube Shorts. I don't know what the deal is with that. But my goal is, is to do a video a day. Um, and so you probably noticed you've seen me a lot more. Um, so these are things that are very important in dealing with this here. Um, and I'm going to do more of them. I actually got a little bit. I'm going to do some sneaky, sneaky stuff. And um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try some things out. We're going to see how it works. I'm not going to, I don't have it up here for now, but we're going to see how it works. Um, some sneaky, sneaky stuff. It's my voice, but that's about all it is. It's crazy. Um, and in the years to come, we don't know what's going to happen, right? We don't know what's going You know, what you believe, what you see and believe is two different things. Because with all the AI out there and the AI voice, it's going to get crazy. Um, it's going to get crazy. Gary, St Gary V stuff there, post everywhere I can. Virtual assistant type work. You know, in a lot of it, you can go to freelancer.com. You can go to Fiverr. You can go to different places and they will get you. Or you can do a, a virtual assistant, definitely, for sure. Do you recommend a book for LinkedIn? Um, I don't. Um, LinkedIn has its own library of stuff and how to do things and different things. Um, I've done some videos in my membership. Um, I actually brought a dude on that's like really good at it. And he gave a, about an hour, hour and a half speech on LinkedIn. So, saw a statistic that 80% of Twitter users were bots. So, what is actually real? And you don't know what actually real is, right? I don't want to be the conspiracy theory, but... I mean, there's a lot of fake stuff going on out there. So, um, you know, and you're going to see a lot more of it. Because with AI, I was watching a video. The whole video was made of AI um, and never did anything. And so he uploaded it. It was a different voice, everything. Um, and so it was all off of AI. And so um, it is out there. The technology is out there. Um, I actually... Probably some of my shorts may be AI. Um, it will be my voice, but I literally took it from chat GPT and stuck it right into this thing and it made a video. Um, it's pretty crazy and we'll see. So we'll want to know 
So in the coming weeks, I want to see who can tell me which videos are AI and which one's not. Is this one AI is the question. Um, the AI generated art and videos is crazy. It is. And that's what I, you know, that's one thing that a lot of things I believe are going to change with, with the chat GPT. And that's only 3.5. And I've heard 4.0 is like super crazy. Um, and I think that there's going to be a lot of crazy stuff coming out of this. Um, it's going to be a lot of neat things. Um, you can sit there and think, well, this is just going to ruin the marketing, or you can figure out how to use it for your advantage. And I would recommend to you to figure out for your advantage, right? Because your advantage is what is going to help you grow, and, and it's going to keep you. And I do believe this is just the tip of the iceberg, and it re literally is. I think there's a lot to be had out there in there. Because Google's had this out since 2018, 2017. There was a thing about it, and they've kind of kept it secret. But this, where it's come out, is definitely making AI stuff a lot more crazy. Um, yeah, what will the 4.0 version GPT look like? Who knows? Um, maybe make a video on how to use AI stuff to promote our business. So... What I've done is actually on my shorts and some of my my, my littler videos is the my goal was is January to do a video a day about how to start a pressure washing business, right? And then February I was going to do how to um, how to do equipment and then how to do marketing and, and I'm going to do kind of a month, but I'm actually got a lot enough videos to get me through about February on how to start a pressure washing business. And so I'm probably going to up, I already got them all uploaded. So I just got to put them in my dates and go with it. Um, and so I will be doing more marketing stuff as I move forward um, and with videos and stuff. Um, and I may get those other videos made and then I will, I will start moving them around and putting things in different places probably is what I'm going to do. Um, I was wanting to kind of keep them same, but I kind of got ADD sometimes, and so I'm sure I'll move them around a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I will be definitely doing that. Um, if ChatGPT does a map search, it will be wild. Um, just make sure you use the editor if you put anything on Google. Either the editor or Grammarly usually changes quite a bit that will make it better for it. So, um, Well, Again, if you want to go check out kpttrain.com, we will. Ha I do have um, two or three trainings coming up in person. This is where you actually use the equipment, not Jason just show you. Um, I do show you how to use it safely, but you actually get to use it. Um, this is hands-on, and it means you get to use it, not just Jason shows you how to use it. Um, also, if you want to know when I go live on Wednesday night at 9 or tonight on 9 o'clock, you can text KING to 859-696-1101. Um, it's also going to be, it'll be an automated system that you'll see how we can use this for later use. It's pretty interesting, pretty cool what happens when you text that number. Um, one last thing is, is if you're not a member of King of Mark Pressure Wash, go check out King of Pressure Wash. We do Monday night marketing Zoom calls every Monday night. They're at um, 9 o'clock, plus you get a free website, you get a phone number, you get all this other stuff with King of Pressure Wash membership. Um, and there's about 40 people that usually come on Monday Night Marketing. And this month, we're talking about Google My Business. How do we get started? Now, what do we need to do to grow our business on Google My Business? I know it is 10.03. I'm running over time, aren't I? <laughs> he is in my area. Cincinnati. I am, I am, I am. I am, I am, I am. Um, this is my third season in business. Last year, I took my foot off the gas. This season is advertising, advertising, advertising. Yep, awesome. That'll be good, Bruce. Don't want to take your foot off the gas. You got to keep on it. When things are good, I see so many people, when people start um, doing well and they get so booked up and they're booked out for two or three weeks, they want to quit marketing. And then we, we get caught up and then we die right and so this is why it's important when we're booked out we just keep 
keep raising our prices and keep booking. That's what we want to do. We don't want to step off the gas. We want to hammer it out on it hard. But I hope you all have a great week, and I'll see you all later.